Uh, yeah. Uh, family, y'all. Just keep it tight, keep it tight, keep it tight. All right. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go, here we go. Uh. I'm the Reverend Dr. Jamie Mathias, pastor of Holy Family Catholic Church in Austin, Texas. Today we celebrate Epiphany, the manifestation of our Lord to the Magi who traveled to Bethlehem from afar. And according to Matthew in today's Gospel, how many Magi traveled to see the Christ child? Not one Magi, not two, but actually we don't know how many Magi there were. Matthew simply tells us that, behold, Magi from the East arrived. He doesn't tell us how many Magi there were, but according to an ancient tradition in the church, it was assumed that because there were three gifts for the Christ child, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, that there were three magi. Three gifts, three supposed magi. And now, three questions for us on this solemnity of the Epiphany. Question number one. If the magi recognized Christ, why can't we? The first question that's raised by today's story of the Magi has to do with the religion of the Magi. What religion were the Magi in today's Gospel? Were they Catholic? No. Were they Christian? No. Jewish? No. In Jesus' time, there were two types of people, Jews and Gentiles. Gentiles were non-Jews, non-believers, pagans. So what religion were the Magi? They were Gentiles, non-believers, pagans. And yet they recognized something special in the Christ child. Matthew wrote for a Jewish audience, and the aim of his gospel was to show that good Jews that Jesus was the Messiah, the Son of God, the new Moses. So who do we find recognizing Jesus as the newborn king in today's gospel? The Magi. Gentiles, non-believers, pagans recognized him. Matthew drives home the point in today's second reading that the Gentiles, non-believers, are co-heirs, members of the same body and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus with the Jews. Matthew is not being so subtle. Today's story screams at us, if the Magi, non-believers, recognized Jesus, why can't we? Question number two, if the Magi made such a sacrifice, why can't we? Do we know that where the Magi lived, were they next door neighbors to Mary and Joseph? No. Did they live in Bethlehem? No. Matthew tells us that they came from another country, presumably far to the east of Bethlehem. So how do we presume that they arrived in Bethlehem? Did the Magi fly? Did they drive a car? Did they stay in nice hotels along the way? According to the images that come down to us, they arrived in Bethlehem either on foot or on camel. Or according to the images that we have in Mexico, one arrived on a camel, one on a horse, and one on an elephant. How fun would that have been to travel from afar to Bethlehem on a camel? Not a lot of fun. How comfortable was the trip? It was presumably not a comfy trip. Yet the Magi made that trip. They went out of their way and likely spent weeks traveling from their country to Bethlehem and back. They made a sacrifice. They exerted themselves. They acted to better know the Christ child, the newborn king. It begs the question, as we begin this new year, how do we go out of our way to better know Christ and others? What sacrifices do we make to journey from the darkness of doubt and to nourish and deepness, deepen our own faith. In our own journey of faith, how do we exert ourselves and act and follow in the footsteps of the Magi? Question number three, what gifts do we bring and how freely do we share them? According to today's Gospel, did the Magi show up in Bethlehem empty-handed? No, they came bearing gifts. In today's first reading, Isaiah prophesied that people would come to Jerusalem from afar bearing gold and frankincense. The psalmist today envisions that all rulers will pay homage to Christ. Yesterday I visited a friend in Dallas. I'll bet you've had a similar experience. I drove all the way to Dallas and had lunch with a friend 
And what did he bring for me? A gift. And there I was, empty-handed, with only the gift of my presence and a smile. Have you ever had an experience like that? Today's gospel begs the question, what gifts do we bring to Christ and to others? And how are we generously sharing of those gifts? They need not be material gifts either. Sometimes it's the gift of our presence or of a smile that brings more light to the lives of others than any amount of gold or frankincense. As we look toward the year ahead then, what gifts will we bring to and share with others? A final question comes to us from the king cake. What keeps us from seeing Christ hidden in others? I would be remiss if we overlooked that lesson that we learned today from the Rosca de Reyes, the traditional king cake, shared in the Mexican and Mexican-American cultures. Do we know what a Rosca de Reyes is? It's a ring-shaped bread, and what's inside? A baby. Well, it's not a real baby, but it's a plastic image of the Christ child. And when you look at the bread, can you see the image of the Christ child? Of course not. It's baked inside. It's hidden inside. When you look at others, can you always see Christ in them? Let's be honest, not always. Especially in certain family members, co-workers, neighbors, our enemies. When we look at some people, it's difficult to see Christ in them. But Christ is there hidden in the dough of their lives, just as the image of Christ is hidden inside the king cake. As we share today the traditional Rosca de Reyes on the Solemnity of the Epiphany, may we be challenged to see beyond the dough of others' lives to see Christ in others. Christ is there, often hidden, if only we had the eyes to see Him. And that glimpse of Him in others would truly be an epiphany. We have